Hello and greetings from Iceland. First of all, I'm happy to say that we don't have to talk about the potential volcanic eruption today. Things look good in a moment. The earthquake swarm has moved north. So things look way better for Grindavík, at least in the moment. So I'm going to use a chance now to answer two questions that I've seen quite often in my comment section. And the first one is about the animals that I've been showing you in my videos. Or uh, will they be safe? And I'm starting with the horses in Grindavík. And actually it isn't that many of them. It's mostly hobby farmers that have them and hobby farmers and horse lovers overall. They will protect their animals. But then we have a sheep, and it's way more of them. But this time of year, they are all inside. We won't see the lamps coming until like six weeks. So at least we know where they are, if the town would have to be evacuated. But after the lamping season, the sheep is herded to the pastures, and that would be somewhere around here, where I'm often driving. And this freedom has always been the trademark of the Icelandic lamp. That is one of the products that we are extremely proud of or naturally grown and naturally spiced. But I will be talking more about agriculture later. We have many specialities there, worth mentioning, mostly because of our isolation and the weather. But let's move to the wildlife, and that is actually pretty simple. The Reykjanes Peninsula is mostly just a chunk of lava, so we are mostly talking about birds by the coast. And most of those birds are seagulls, and I think that overall Icelanders would not lose sleep over the seagulls in case of an eruption. But we do actually have something special there, on the Reykjanes Peninsula, and that is the Arctic turn that will return in April. From the Antarctic, where it winters every year, and the Arctic turn is no ordinary bird, I can tell you that. She is flying on average over 70,000 kilometers, or like 44,000 miles every year, between their nesting ground in Iceland and the wintering grounds meaning that this little bird will travel in its lifetime around 2.4 million kilometers or 1.5 million miles or three around trips to the moon. And it is the only bird in the world that does such a mileage in its lifetime. So one might say, I'm going to take my hat off for that kind of achievement, but I would not do it. I would actually do as this boy and use a helmet. This is the breeding ground of the Arctic turn near Grindavík on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And this little bird is not only a good flyer, it is extremely protective. And she attacks just about anything that comes close. If it's people that get to near, they will poke your head until it bleeds. This protection that the Arctic turn is providing to its young ones is so good that the other species are also nesting nearby, knowing that the seagulls, they won't get near. So this is more or less the complete picture with the animals on the peninsula. Everything looks good in a moment. And then I'm coming to the second question I'm about to answer now. And that is, how is it overall possible to be living here? Is it uh, acceptable to be living between volcanoes in uh, earthquake regions and such? And it is a good question, but it will take me several videos to answer it fully. But the first part of the answer I'm going to give you is actually about this spot here, where the Arctic turn breeds. And my answer is also related to black Icelandic humor. And the connection between Icelandic humor and this breeding ground of the Arctic turn is quite simple. This is a spot where we sometimes drive tourists. We just stop on a road and say to them, look at all those cute little birds. Let's go out and have a look. And as soon as we get the tourists out of the car, we lock the door and start filming. This is one of the oldest tourist pranks we have here in Iceland, describing pretty well how nasty our humor can be, and how we are in a way throwing back some of the stuff that our nature has been throwing at us. Or maybe it can be described as kind of a self-defense mechanism, in order to take our nature not too seriously, no matter what. And the moment when we cannot find uh, some light or some fire within ourselves to deal with our nature, the battle is over. So black humor is just one of our tools to cope here. And since I'm talking about humor, I want to remind you that I have translated around uh, 100 comedy skits on my channel, all in the same playlist. That is some of the oldest stuff on my channel. Nobody seems to like it. Just like we Icelanders don't like the weather here. But my idea with this channel was from the beginning to describe Iceland as it is, not to sound like a tourist brochure. Oh my god. 
God. This is just amazing. People in Iceland are so beautiful and cool. I am also quite sure that humor is one of the best tools we have in order to get to know an issue. So feel free to check out my comedy playlist if you want to know better how we cope here in Iceland. And with that, I'm sending you all my best from a volcanic island, Iceland.